G'day, Andrew here. I'm with my friends at MathsMate and we are going to show you a game called Rectangles. I call it Rectangles because you're making rectangles and R-E-K-T because you're going to get wrecked and wreck your opponents. So 20 by 20 grid is what you need. If you've got a Think Square kit, you use rubber bands and do this with a hands-on uh, approach. Otherwise, you use you know a laminated A4 or A3 sheet and then draw it on with whiteboard markers. Um, I prefer this because you don't have to rub it all off at the end. Um, so each player will get a colour of rubber bands, so it will all be a different colour. And the aim of the game is to capture the greatest amount of space out of you and all your opponents. And so to do that, we'll all be taking the same dice roll, which sounds weird, um, but we won't be applying it in the exact same way. So with dice games, I generally don't like them because they're luck based. In this version though, everyone gets the same roll, and then you get to choose how to apply that based on what's going to be to your advantage in this game. Alright, so every player is going to start from the very corner, and when we roll the dice, there's two ways we can do this. I'll show you the simple way to start with, and then we'll go the more complex way as we progress in the game. So you roll the dice, and because I'm tight and I didn't want to buy heaps more dice, uh, that have different numbers, you double that number. So that number is 10, and it represents the area of the rectangle we can create. So starting with me, we all have to create uh, a rectangle which has an area of 10 square units, and that needs to start from our corner. So I could make a 10 by one, or I could make a five by two. And so I'm gonna be nice, and I'll just do a five by two to start with, and then it's Beck's turn. And again, Beck gets the same roll that I've got, so that it's not luck-based. If I rolled sixes and Beck rolled ones, then it wouldn't be really nice for her to play. So an area of 10, then Rob gets a turn, then Joanna gets a turn. At the start, it doesn't matter about the turn order, but as the game progresses, I might want to take space that Beck wants, and so the order in which you take your turn or place your shapes does matter. So why not a 10 by 1? You can do a 10 by 1 if you like, yep. So, so the winner is the one with... Captures the most space. Squares, so yep. So at the moment, we've all got the same amount of space, and in this version, everyone will have the same amount of space because we're creating shapes with the same amount of space but I'll show you a, a more advanced version as we go. So after the first turn, the dice rotates because I would have the advantage of placing the first shape on every round otherwise. So I give the dice to Beck. We still all take this dice roll, but Beck gets to be the one rolling it. So one, <laughs> so double it, two. We all get to place a rectangle with an area of two square units. That cannot overlap. So it can't overlap your shapes, it much, must touch one of your previous shapes on either a corner, like that, or on an edge, like that. Yeah, perfect. And so if you place a shape like that, somebody can sneak through that gap because they can connect from there to there, or vice versa. So if you place it in another way and build a wall like that, it might, might stop from getting past. And the tape of this can go in the corner as well. All right, now Rob's turn. Four. All right, so again, it doesn't have to touch your first shape. It can touch any of the previously placed shapes on either an edge or a corner now. And the area is eight. We're going to make the game a bit more interesting now. So that's the basic version. I would start there if I was teaching my students that. But now the dice, we're going to use perimeter as the value. So whenever we double the dice, we're using perimeter and we're going to add four. So the formula, and I've used this to teach algebra to, to younger kids, just is two, two times the dice plus four. That's the value of whatever you roll. And that now represents the perimeter. And that gives you heaps more flexibility in the shapes that you make but it also sacrifices area if you want to go for a really long, annoying thing like this. So, for example, if I rolled a 6, 2D, so 2D is 12, and then plus 4, 16. So I've got a perimeter of 16. And I'm just going to demonstrate in the middle of the board here. So a perimeter of 16 could be a 4x4. Four four. That is the distance around that is 16, and the area is also 16. If I wanted to make uh, a long annoying shape, I could do a 7 by 1 because 7 plus 1 is 8 and then 7 plus 1 is 8. So let's just make that for a second. Get the tangled here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by 1. 
So both of these shapes have a perimeter of 16. This shape, however, captures a space of 16 squares. This captures a space of only seven squares. So this is a much better shape for capturing space, but if I was able to block back off and make a giant paddock for myself, that would be worth the sacrifice. So it makes the game far more interesting when you start playing with perimeter. So we'll do that for a few shots and then we'll get to the end game. Four times two, eight plus four, 12. So I'm just gonna go three by three square. Now remember, squares are a special type of rectangle. They're a type of rectangle with all sides being equal, so they still count. And if I didn't mention before, every shape that you create in this game must be rectangular. So if you get toward the end of the game and someone like me can't actually make my turn, I miss that shot and the game will just continue. The game will end when a number is rolled and nobody can fit a rectangle with that perimeter in. Once that happens, you count up the space that you've captured. So this does not ca count as me capturing it because I need to put the rectangle here, same with that. Uh, so I've still, I'm still alive for the moment, but I'll be about three turns and I don't think I'll be able to go anymore. Come on, we need a one. We need a one. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ends it, ends it That's properly. the end of the game. So when you end the game, as a teacher again, mm -hmm. I would like my students to strategically count the number of squares they've captured rather than going through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, it's nice to keep track of when you pull them off, but because they're all over the place, for someone like me, I would just capture or say that I've got all this area, then subtract the bits that I'm missing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. 6 by 11, 66, and then take away 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so 56, 54, 52, 50. So that, that space for there for me is 50, and I keep going. Generally, if you score over 100, you'll be right up there and probably win it. Uh, I'm nowhere close. Beck's nowhere close. So we'll see. We'll do the final count, and we'll let you know who wins. Mm -hmm. All right, 50. 72 plus 25? 97. Well, you know. There you go, so it wasn't too far off. So I was 87. Right. 92. Wow. Wow. 73. And it, it really depends on how efficiently you can use the space that you mm. did section yeah. off for yourself. That's um, awesome. And, and it's nice because you could put down way more shapes, but if they're long, skinny ones, mm. um, you don't get as much area for your yeah. buck. Yeah. So anyway, well done. Yeah. That's cool. To download a free copy of the Rectangles game board and instructions, visit thinksquare.com.au slash rect. For hundreds more games, puzzles, and rich activities just like this, check out the MathsMate Year 7 and 8 textbooks. Enjoy.